Hey folks, John Thompson, Spring Framework Guru. So in this module, we're going to take a look at checking out the source code from GitHub. So generally my courses, I keep all my source code on GitHub, so it's publicly available. The courses will step you through doing exercises. And what I try to do is I try to give you a link to a branch in GitHub of the beginning source code for that module. And then I'll go through the module and then I'll check that in under an ending branch. So each, each of my modules, generally speaking, are going to have a, a beginning and an ending source code. So this way you can go through the exercise and if you run into a problem, you, if you happen to do something wrong, you can compare it to what I had was working and hopefully you can spot your mistake. So you, you do have a, a working example at the beginning and a working example at the end to help you in the learning process. So let's go ahead and go over to the website and take a look at uh, where the stuff is at and how to check out a GitHub because I don't know if everybody knows how to work with Git. So I'll step you through. We'll go through and we'll check out a GitHub and then we'll open up the project using IntelliJ and I'll show you exactly how to do that step by step here. Okay, I brought up one of my course modules and you can see here we have the, the course outline. This is my Spring Core Advanced course. And I, I brought up uh, one of the modules in it. And we're midway through the course here. And you can see I have get the source at the top. And I, I have a note there where I can get it on GitHub. And also I have the same link down at the bottom. But this is for the ending version. And while I'm not on the screen, some people say that they have a hard time seeing the, my code examples. I do want to point out, you do have a full screen option here, and I do record the video on a MacBook Pro in the full screen mode, so you should be able to see the exact same thing that I do, and I do try to do callouts when I can to highlight things, but hopefully this is good enough for everybody to see. So let's go over to GitHub now. I'm going to come up here, and I'm going to click on this link, and we can see now I'm over in GitHub. This is a public repository. Now what I want to do is I want to grab this here that I found the easiest way is just come in and copy it to the clipboard. So I'm click, clicking on that. Now I have a command window opened up. I'm going to toggle over to that. And what we want to do is I'm in a working directory. I just have a temp folder set up under my, my source folder. And you want to check this out wherever you want to make your working directory on your local machine. So I'm just going to do git get clone space and now I'm going to right click and say paste and that's that URL so let's go ahead and do that now if I do a ls I can see that spring core is checked out and there it is and now we can see I did a git status and we are on branch master and this is a, an important thing to, to note because here we can see over here on the, the site, we are in the, the Spring Data JPA code assignment. That That is the branch that I want for the, the starting. And let's go over to IntelliJ and I'll show you exactly how to check things out. So what I want to do is come up here to IntelliJ, File, New. And I want to say Project from Existing Sources. So IntelliJ is going to ask where it's at. And sometimes if it's a new directory, I need to get in the right spot. You may have to refresh it, but I do have my temp. So we come in here, we get the, we highlight the folder of the checked out project and I'm just going to say, okay. Now IntelliJ is going to check that out. And of course, it's going to open up on my other monitor. This is a Maven project. So I just want to say next. And it's going to pick up everything. And generally, you're, you're okay just leaving the defaults here. I'm saying next. So now IntelliJ found that, that Spring project. And I'm going to say next. Now it's going to ask for a JDK, and I actually have two 1.8 JDKs on, on mine. I have the dash 40 or dash 25. I'm going to go with the dash 40. 
My courses are written to Java 1.8. The exact release of Java is, is not critical. I do encourage you to update Java as the releases come out. I'm a little bit behind here, but any 1.8 version is going to be fine. 1.6 definitely will not work for us. I'm going to say next. It's giving us a name. I'm going to take, take that name. I'm going to say finish. Now we can see IntelliJ is popping up a message in the top right corner that an unregistered BCS root, that's version control system, that just went away. And it looks like IntelliJ automatically detected that. So now remember how I said that we were on the Git master branch. And I'm going to toggle back over here to GitHub. And we can see that we want to be on the branch spring data JPA code assignment. So what I want to do is come back over here to IntelliJ, come here, and I want to find that, see where it says origin JPA code assignment? And that's not the one we want. We want spring data JPA code assignment. And here, here's the exact branch. So you want to be careful. I do have a lot of branches out here, but this is the exact branch that we want. And what I want to do is say, check out as a new local branch and say, okay, here. And we can see that things have changed in the project, especially with Maven. So we'll say import changes. So now we, we have that, that project checked out and this is the current code for this lesson. So you saw how easy it was to check out from GitHub. The main thing you want to be aware of is the branch that we're working on because I am using a common GitHub repository, but I'm using branches to tag the code as to where we are in the course. So I'm using a branch tag to say, this is the beginning of this course module. And then I'm using another tag to say, this is the end. So just be aware of how the I'm using the branches in this. It's kind of a non-traditional way of using Git, but it works out well for as you progress through the course, you know exactly where you're starting. And then you have the code example of where I ended with that module. So you can compare and contrast. I totally encourage you to try to code the examples as you go through the course. But if you make a mistake and need a question, you are able to switch over to that other branch at the end and see exactly what I did for the course. Yeah.